All right, so get this. What if I told you scientists might be finding ways to fight COVID by looking at how we age? It's a it's a fascinating avenue. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just looking at the virus itself, they're kind of going upstream a little bit to see how aging plays into how severe COVID might be. Like they're trying to figure out why the river's flowing so fast in the first place. Right? Yeah. <laughs> We're diving into a 2024 review article from Cell Regeneration. It's dense. I'm not going to lie. But some really interesting findings in here. So are you ready to unpack this with me? Absolutely. Let's dive in. All right. So first, we got to talk about our lungs, right? You know, those things we totally take for granted. And what's interesting is that our lungs are actually some of the first places we really see aging. Um, really? Yeah. I guess that makes sense. I mean, you don't really think about your lungs aging like you do your skin or like your joints or something. Exactly. And this article highlights how as we get older, our lungs naturally become less efficient at repairing themselves. Right. And so we start to lose these key lung stem cells, yeah. like basal cells, hmm. that are crucial for that repair. Okay. And the cilia, those little hair-like structures that help sweep out mucus, right. those get weaker over time, too. So it's like everything's slowing down, getting a little, I don't know, rusty? In a way, yeah. Yep. You know, and it's subtle, but it all adds up, right? Think about it this way. Like, a common cold might stick around longer now than it did when you were younger. Yeah, totally. Colds used to be like a minor inconvenience. Now it's like, this is going to take me out for a week. Right. Okay, so our lungs are already working overtime as we age, and then COVID comes along, so no wonder it hits some of us harder than others. Yeah, and that's where it gets even more interesting, I'd say, maybe a little unsettling, mm -hmm. when we start talking about something called cellular senescence. Oh, boy, here come the big words. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Basically, we're talking about what you could call zombie cells. D zombie cells. In our lungs. Okay, now I'm a little freaked out. Yeah, it's like a sci-fi movie. Yeah. But as cells in our body age, some of them stop dividing like they should. Uh -huh. But they also don't die off. They just kind of linger. Uh -huh. Stuck in this, we can call it a zombie-like state. Okay, so they're not exactly munching on brains, but they're also not exactly pulling their weight either. Right. And here's the problem. Instead of just hanging out being useless... They release a bunch of inflammatory molecules. Mm -hmm. Think of it like a toxic cocktail. Oh, no. Messing with the healthy cells around them. Okay. Scientists call this inflammatory soup the, get this, senescence-associated secretory phenotype, or SACP. Catchy. So far, this is sounding like a regular Tuesday. I mean, our bodies are constantly dealing with all this cellular weirdness. True. But here's the kicker. SARS-CoV-2 infection? Mm -hmm. So the virus that causes COVID? It actually accelerates this whole zombie cell situation. Hold on. So getting COVID speeds up the zombie apocalypse happening inside of us. Oh, you got it. You got it. Oh, great. It's this vicious cycle. The virus makes us more vulnerable to these inflammatory cells. And then those cells make the effects of the virus even worse, particularly in our lungs, what we were just talking about. You know, they're already more vulnerable as we age. Right. And researchers think this could be a big reason why older people are more likely to experience severe COVID. Okay. And even more concerning, it might play a role in long COVID, too. Okay, so now I'm starting to see why this research is so important, because it's not just about treating the virus anymore. It's about understanding how our own bodies might be working against us as we get older. Exactly. And that's what's so fascinating is that researchers are now looking for ways to fight back against these zombie cells. So we've got these zombie cells. They're trashing the place, making COVID worse, maybe messing with our health long term. I'm ready to invest in like a brain protection helmet or something. But what are scientists actually doing about this? Is there any way to fight back against these like cellular party crashers? That's where the exciting part comes in, right? Scientists are looking at two types of drugs that target these senescent cells. They're called senolytics and xenomorphics. Senolytics and wait, xenomorphics. Okay, those are some words. So break it down for me. Which one is the zombie slayer? So xenolytics, those are like the action heroes, right? They go in, guns blazing, take out the senescent cells completely. Okay. Xenomorphics, on the other hand, they're more like the negotiators. Okay. They don't destroy those cells, but they quiet them down. They stop them from releasing all that inflammatory stuff, that SASP that's causing the problems. Okay, so one's like taking out the trash and the other one's more like putting a muzzle on things. I guess they're both good strategies depending on what's going on. But are we talking about some like futuristic sci-fi stuff here? Or are there actual drugs in the works? There are some really promising candidates out there. And you know what? Some might surprise you. 
Okay. One that's getting a lot of attention is the combo of docetinib and quisetin, D plus Q for short. D plus Q. Sounds like a vitamin you'd get at the health food store. Well, kind of. Dasatinib is actually a leukemia drug. Okay. And curasatin, you can find that naturally in things like red onions and apples. Wait, hold up. So a cancer drug and something in my fruit basket. That's how we're fighting zombies now. Right. Sounds a little strange, but that's what's so cool about all this. It's about finding new uses for existing drugs. Right. And looking at natural compounds in new ways. And the early results for this D plus Q, they're promising. Okay, so how does that work? Are they like giving people apples and onions alongside their chemo? Not quite. No, it's about the specific compounds in these things and how they interact. Mm -hmm. In animal studies, this D plus Q, it's been shown to clear out those zombie cells and even improve survival rates in mice that were infected with a virus really similar to SARS-CoV-2. Interesting. Now, of course, we need more research to see how it translates to us humans, but it's a good lead. For sure. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves, right? But we're talking about maybe treating COVID with something you'd find in your CRISPR drawer. Okay, now you've got my attention. What else are we working with here? Another interesting one is called fecetin. It's a flavonoid found in, you guessed it, strawberries and apples. Wait, more fruit? Are you telling me we could fight COVID with a fruit salad? Well, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. But interesting, right? So fecetin, that acts as a senolytic. Okay. And in studies, it's been shown to reduce inflammation, improve those survival rates in mice infected with that same virus, that SARS-CoV-2-like virus. Okay. I am adding eat more fruit to my <laughs> pandemic preparedness list officially. Good idea. But just to be clear, we're not saying that munching on strawberries is going to cure COVID. Yeah, no, no, no. It's more complicated than that. We're talking very specific compounds found in these things, and they need to be studied in a, a very controlled way yeah. to really understand them. But- it does kind of show you the power of a nature, maybe, it's right? Sure. And that maybe we could find new treatments in unexpected places. Totally, yeah. So, okay, we've got this potential one-two punch with the D plus Q, maybe an assist from physetine. Anything else that researchers are looking at when it comes to these zombie cells? So we've got some promising leads with the D plus Q, the physetine, but anything else in the running when it comes to these zombie cells, you know, taking them down? Yeah, researchers are looking at some more familiar medications to see if they have any effect. Okay. Like metformin, for example. A common diabetes drug. Metformin? Wait, like the stuff my grandma takes for her diabetes. That's the one. Yeah. And it seems like it might have some anti-aging effects. Mm -hmm. Maybe by calming that inflammatory storm that the virus triggers. Okay, so first it was onions and apples, and now we're talking about my grandma's diabetes meds. <laughs> this is wild. It's like scientists are raiding their kitchens for COVID cures. But no, seriously, this is... This is giving me hope. If something as common as metformin could help, that's that's huge, right? Yeah, it's definitely a promising area of research, although we always need more research, right? Of course, of course, yeah. I don't want to give anyone false hope or anything. But still, who would have thought we'd be fighting COVID by targeting aging itself? It's kind of like rewriting the rule book, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what's so exciting about this research, is that it could have implications way beyond COVID. Right. We're talking about potentially changing how we approach all kinds of age-related diseases. So instead of just treating like heart disease or Alzheimer's as we get older, maybe we could target the aging itself. You got it, yeah. yeah. Addressing the root cause instead of just playing whack-a-mole with symptoms. Wow. If we can figure out how to manage this cellular senescence thing, maybe tell those inflammatory zombie cells to just chill out a little bit. Crap. It could really change everything. Wow, that's, yeah. That is a game changer. We started with, can we fight COVID with anti-aging drugs? And uh -huh. now we're talking about like extending lifespan, health span for everyone. And that's the beauty of science, right? You go deep on one question and it opens up a whole universe of other ones. It's a really exciting time to be following this stuff. It really is. So for our listener who's been on this journey with us, we know it's been a lot, but we hope you're walking away realizing that scientists are uncovering some really fascinating links between aging and uh, and how bad your COVID might be, but even more importantly, that they're developing treatments that could, that target aging itself. Treatments that, like we said, could have a huge impact on how long and how well we all live. Absolutely. So, I don't know, it kind of gives a whole new meaning to the phrase aging gracefully, doesn't it? I like it, yeah. This has been an incredible deep dive. Really appreciate your insights on this. We're going to keep an eye on this research for sure and bring you updates as they develop. But until then, thanks for listening, everybody.